What do you reckon? Finally ready? Yeah. Going to KI. And it's been pretty interesting. Kate Willoughby's apparently had some 30 knot gusts, which is not what you want when you're on the open water. And at the moment we've got a flooding tide, but the wind's going that way, so we're just gonna head across to Cuttlefish and see, I don't know, which uh, which one's got more influence on us and adjust our ferry glide to that. And if the weather lets us, we'll pop around to Antichamber, but if not, pull up short at Cuttlefish. We're throwing them in the double just so, you know, less boats on water if it does get dicey. Uh, yeah, this is uh, a bit of an adventure. <laughs> well, there's always a little bit of nerves entering into backstairs passage that we're off. And uh, hoping for the best on the smallest tape trip ever. So, it's been difficult working out which way to aim, but the tide's definitely winning the battle. The tide race is just there. Going that way at about 2k an hour. We are making this. Let's just hope the wind doesn't get too much. Probably 13 knots at the minute. 13 to 15. Well, that brings us to the end of our first third, one hour down. And it's turned out to be quite, quite lovely out here. It's not getting worse yet. We've got Vows of Virgo, letting us know conditions are getting ready for rain. It's time for a snack. So, uh, the wind's just about all dropped out. Maybe five knots, which means very soon it's gonna start blowing southwesty, which is from there, which will be a bit of a hindrance. So just gonna try and mooch to land before it comes in and have less headwind to battle with. Yeah, we're just coming into the last hour of the flooding tide and sitting there having that break we were moving about a kilometre an hour just that way smack bang straight up the guts of the passage so it makes it feel a bit better about having only a four to five k average when you've been fighting two k's an hour against you so it's not the ideal way of crossing the passage but we didn't really have much of a choice, but tomorrow we'll hop on the travel later and be flying home. Drinks break. If I didn't have a GPS, I would not believe we've actually gotten closer. So awesome. So we're playing. Forwards, backwards, or idle. Waiting to see if the tide's changed. Place your bets, what are we doing? Um, I'll, I'll stick with backwards. Stick I'll backwards. just go with idle. Go on that way. You reckon we're stationary? You reckon we're at, um, what's good? Slack tide. Oh. Would be the word. Oh no. We are very lightly Still going backwards. <laughs> In fact, almost whence we came from. So, I'm scared that means we're nearly done fighting the tide. Stupidly. And hopefully soon we can catch it down to antechamber. Well, this has been one of the harder crossings, not because of the waves, but tide and wind, just missing out on that northerly and it's costing us about 2 or 3k an hour. So it's been 3 hours 20 in we've done 14k's. Still got another 6 to go. It's so close, it's so far. It's turned into about a Ten knot headwind. No, after three hours forty-five, breaking longest record. Finally hit the coast, and wow, there's so many fish.
Next day, so I think it's kind of like crossing Concord. If only we could just camp here. <laughs> Now we're trying to make a hard choice. Do we go 5k's that way where we know it won't be windy? Or 3k's that way into the wind where it could be windy? Which makes tomorrow easier. Don't know. More wind. So close, like 2k's away. It's going to take half an hour. Not right. No. Sorry that was a beat. Somewhere like that. 5.30, finally made it. Uh, it took four and a half hours. The quickest I've done that is two and a half. That's just a big turnaround. <laughs> and I was gonna congratulate you on landing on KI. It might be the- You just edit that out though. You just edit that out. Might be the hardest, hardest part of the day. It's just actually, Step it onto the damn land. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hold on. Bloody, bloody made it. Woo, just before all that gloomy stuff. So it tasted like detergent. Mm -hmm. So I started frying them in Aaron's pot. And uh -huh. they still tasted like detergent. And I was like, maybe it's just the mushroom. Yes. <laughs> but lo and behold, what you thought was oil, was oil and detergent. Apparently. So Abby was kind enough to lend me some oil and I just detergented my whole meal. It's okay, you get past now, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. So, we got flooding tide coming up. So this section here, as the water hits the coast and funnels in, this is where it gets fast. Flowing, which is also a bit of fast fast tide. And we've got Sutherland. So if we're here, to get there, we'd probably have to aim right at Flyhole Beach, which is that, that V in the hills there, where it turns start. We'd be aiming right at that coast. But, we're gonna move along through the bay to here so we can have a look at this and see, uh, we'll see the island um, which then will give us a much more straighter jump at it. We probably still aim roughly at the flow hole so we can hit the coast early. It's way easier to hit the coast and then follow it in than miss it and fight it in. The only thing we have to worry of is the Atlas Shoal. The Atlas Shoal, so there's a goes from 50 metres deep, 30 metres deep to 5 metres deep in this section on here. Um, so it can be super rough. And looking at the horizon you'll see that it's it's not smooth, it's it's lumpy. And it'll only get lumpier as we get across, but I reckon we'll be up for it and I imagine we're we'll probably almost not two hours, an hour and a half at least of our crossing time today. So we'll head out around the bay to Cape St Albans and then back across. I'm looking forward to it. There's Cape St Albans. Now we're gonna make our crossing from yeah started here, came around to the Cape, and we're gonna whoo, catch the tide and the southerlies all the way back up. Should be a quick, fairly quick run, a lot faster than yesterday. Quite a gnarly tide race around Cape St Albans, so we're expecting to get a bit rougher around the corner, have a look at the scraper, and then head out. Uh, it's just like straight away, it's rough. Absolutely tide racy here, just clap at us and tide race. Feel yourself moving sideways. It's just awesome. There's cliffs, there's scraper up here. I think some people have surfed, it's just 
Beyond me. Man, water is ripping. It's a mess. Well, there's a scraper. All sorts of chaos. We've been paddling forwards for about 10 minutes now and we've actually moved sideways. We've come across here but we're facing that way. So it's just racing through here. It's probably time to turn and run back to the mainland I reckon. Because we're not just going to waste our time here. So it's amazing to see. So just sitting here we're moving at 4 k's an hour. Two knots. So that's going to help us get home real well. So just totally different today. This is how you should cross the passage. We're just cruising at eight and a half k's now with a two to three knot flood. A little bit of wind behind us. Much easier though. Still going to be a challenge not to miss Fishery Beach in Cape Jervis because it's hooted. Pretty big though, you know. It's not the greatest place just to come hang out in the car. We've still got another at least two hours of it. Well, I'm pretty proud of these guys. The seas are getting big. The whole ocean's just sort of white caps, you probably can't tell. And they're sitting there chatting away, which means they're all tickety boo. So yeah, if we're here and the tide changes and started going out, this would just turn into an absolute nightmare. The sea state would just be huge and be awful. So there is that daunting feeling of like you've got limited time to make it before it all turns really upside down. But we're flying along this nearly an hour and we're nearly halfway, so really good. So I know it looks like I'm turning us more to the right again, but as we've got close to the shoal, the uh, the races or well, the speed of the tides increased, and so we're actually having to angle off more to hold our line. <laughs> it's kind of deceptive, but yeah, it's only like a kilometre over there, but it's accelerating as it hits this coast. So even though it looks like we're pointing away over there at about 30 degrees. We're still missing Blowhole Beach. <laughs> so it's all just quite interesting how this uh, how the game works. There you go, we're moving at about four to four and a half k's an hour in about that direction. And we're trying to get there and cross here and just find it amazing that, you know, an hour and 40 minutes ago, uh, bearing was at the gap up there and now that same bearing is about there just how much we've moved you know kilometers in an hour and 40 minutes that's why you can't just just paddle to KI um, unless you get lucky our bearing is you know 30 degrees but we're actually heading at three, four, five. So it's that 15, 45 degrees between where we're actually traveling, well, where we're facing and where we're actually traveling. So deceptive. Yeah, we're within a couple hundred meters of the coast. Should be able to just coast down those fisheries there. Made it. It's been one of the uh, strongest tide current crossing things I've had here for sure. I'm well, not at the spring tide. I think it was raising about half a metre today, so <laughs> not even that much. It's the press. Congratulations on your first ever uh, KI crossing and back. How do you feel? <laughs> Very tired. Very tired? <laughs> yeah. What an honour to shake these hands. <laughs> oh, look at them. That's disgusting. 
Yeah. But that was one of the most interesting uh, ferry gliding return tide racing days I've had so far. Uh, I really enjoyed it.